Good morning. How's everybody out there? Keep coming. Don't stop. Keep walking. Keep walking. Keep walking down to the front. There you go. At a girl. At a girl. This is First Christian Church Lubbock. We are glad that you are here today. It is the 4th of July. It is a weekend of celebration. And it's where we come and we are thankful for the freedoms that we have that so many laid down their lives that we might have. But we are also a Christian people called by our God. And that in the freedoms that we have, because there are those who gave of themselves, let us celebrate that freedom to answer God's call upon our lives. So come and let us gather. Let us stand and let us worship in song. Jacob. Will you stand and join us as we begin our worship this morning with Blessed Be Your Name.
and humbled to be in your home this morning. We've already begun our worship service, and we're trying to sing our praises to you. We ask that through the remainder of the service, we'll be aware of your presence, and ask that you will bless and lift up Herb and his sermon in our communion time in the rest of our worship service, that it will be pleasing to you. In Christ's name I pray, amen. We come and we gather and it is a time of prayer and it is indeed the 4th of July and the weekend. So as we pray this morning and as uh, you will have times of silence, I would ask that you would lift up those who have given of themselves and in service to this country. Uh, I would ask that you would lift up in prayer, you know, those within this congregation that are in need. Uh, If you have not heard... Uh, Joanne Newman's mother died yesterday morning. Um, Not terribly unexpected, probably not unexpected yesterday, but uh, her mother had been struggling uh, with her health for some time. We don't have final arrangements. Uh, When I talked to to Joanne yesterday, she said they thought it would be at Thursday, uh, on Thursday at her mother's church, but as soon as we get those final plans in the office, uh, then we will share that uh, with you. And as you continue to wind down in this transition, uh, we have, or you have, four Sundays in August, or July. And then Paul will be here in August. So I would ask you to lift up Paul and his family and this church as you all prepare to meet one another. And basically, you have decided to get married, to share in a long-term relationship. And so... uh, You might want to pray for that, you think? So, anything else? Any other celebrations? Any other concerns that we have? Let us be in prayer. Almighty and gracious God, we come and we gather here, knowing that you are our God and we are your people. And here, gathered in the presence of your Holy Spirit, we come to sing praises to your name and to open our hearts and minds and souls to your word and to gather as church that we might be inspired to leave this place and to share your love. Oh God, on this holiday weekend, hear our thanksgiving for the freedoms we have and for those service men and women who gave of themselves. And as we pray for those who gave of themselves that we might have freedom, O God, hear now our prayers that in the midst of this freedom, We are free to follow your call 
upon our lives as a Christian people. Oh God, we come and we lift up those who struggle within our congregation, those who are in the hospital facing surgery, those who on this day are recovering from surgery, those that are ill and are fighting for their health. Here it says we lift up Joanne upon the death of her mother. Here are our prayers for the grief of her family. Here, oh God, as we pray for the people, your sons and daughters, in this world. In the midst of our prayers, O oh God, in the midst of the freedom that we enjoy and honor this day in our culture, hear now our prayers for peace. O oh God, for the wholeness that you have given to us through the life, death, and resurrection of your Son, for the power and authority that you have given to us through the gift of the Holy Spirit, through your word we gather to be inspired, and we pray for the courage that will lead us out into the world, sharing your grace, your mercy, and your love. For we gather and pray these things in Jesus' holy name, and we all say, Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning will come from the Gospel of John, from the 13th chapter, verses 31 through 35. Here reads these words. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. And if God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I have said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. May God add God's blessing to our hearing and to our understanding. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our Lord and our Redeemer. And, O oh God, may your word indeed be a light unto our lives, that it will lead us out into those courageous places where we share your grace and mercy. And on this day, O oh God, as I awoke, you granted me the ability to speak my prayer one more time is that you will now grant me the wisdom to preach. For we come and we gather and we pray these things in Jesus' name. And we all say, Amen. Gonzales is a town of about 3,000 people. It's between Houston and Austin where you long ago have driven out of the piney woods of East Texas into the dry, arid land of the ancient Chihuahua Desert, which at one time covered almost all of Texas. 
It's where the campground for the Coastal Plains area and the Blue Bonnet area uh, is located. It's where hundreds and hundreds of kids come each summer for their camping experience. It's where they come and they gather, and in the, in the, in the small meeting places, it's air-conditioned, and in the dorms where they sleep, it's air-conditioned, but where they gather to meet in the biggest group, it is not air-conditioned. No, it's not. You've been there. Yeah. It's hot. A while back, there was a leading disciple minister who came to the disciple conference uh, to give a seminar uh, to youth ministers and directors of youth ministries and those who work with the youth. It was early summer, so we had not quite cracked the 100-degree mark yet, but it was hot enough. He was introduced, and as he walked up to the podium uh, at that initial session, he looked out over all of these people who had gathered to hear his wisdom about leading youth. And But before he started, he said, you know, all my life I have studied about the end of the world, and I never thought I'd get there until today. It was hot. I came to that same conference center at another time. I was there to lead a seminar for the ministers uh, in the Coastal Plains area and the Blue Bonnet area. We had just begun to gather. We were just beginning to start when the director of the camp came to me and said, your brother called you. He needs you to call him back as soon as possible. Now, I knew my mother had had surgery. She had begun her recovery, was doing well, went to a rehab center, was doing well there, and then all of a sudden some things started to change. They took her back to the hospital, and almost overnight, the bottom just kind of fell out. And I called my brother, and Daryl said, it's time for you to come home. And so it was four hours back to Houston. I couldn't fly out to, to Ohio until 6.20 the next morning. Daryl met me at the airport, took me to the hospital where my father and my sister were. He had called mom's surgeon, Lori Seraph, a good friend of mine. He and I had grew, grown up together, played sports together, and he was now my mother's orthopedist. And he said, Herb... The whole team has met on this. There's nothing else we can do. Her body is just old and worn out. And so my brother and sister and father and I had this long conversation, and my father made the decisions to pull off all of the life support. And my mother died within the hour. I was stunned. I was lost. There weren't many times that I had felt that alone. And we had the funeral, and and the days began to stack up. And I don't know how long it was before I could get over. The question I had over and over and over again in my mind was, if my mother had known the last time she was going to talk to me was going to be the last time, what would she have said to me? If she had only known. Today's scripture is the same set of circumstances. If we take ourselves back in time, Jesus is getting ready for what is inevitably waiting for him as he goes back to Jerusalem. He's been teaching the disciples, trying to bring them along, trying to prepare them for them to go out and be the teachers and the preachers and the leaders of this new faith. And he already knows that Judas is going to betray him, and Judas has already left the group. And so the scripture says, Jesus took the disciples out. We don't know where, but Jesus took the disciples out, and somewhere they stopped. And I think Jesus looked them eye to eye to eye to eye. 
And then Jesus said to them, Where I am going, you cannot come. I'm only going to be here for a little while. And where I am going, you cannot follow. Can you imagine those 11 disciples stunned into silence? Can you imagine them staring at each other, looking at each other? Can you imagine their confusion? Can you imagine their shock? Can you imagine the fear that must have been in their hearts and their souls? And then Jesus speaks up. And a New Testament uh, uh, scholar said, when Jesus spoke up at this point, he didn't talk in parables. He didn't talk in paradoxes. He didn't tell some cute little story. He didn't ask the disciples questions, hoping that they would discover for themselves the truth that Jesus was trying to teach. Rather than talk like that, as Jesus did so many other times, when we look at today's scripture, Jesus spoke directly and succinctly to the disciples. And he said to them, My little children, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should love one another. And then he delivered it. He said, by this, Everyone will know that you are my disciples if you but love one another. Simple. Straightforward. At the core. Foundational. There's another New Testament scholar that said this new command is simple enough for a toddler to memorize it and appreciate it, but it is profound enough that the most mature believers are repeatedly embarrassed at how poorly they comprehend it and put it into practice. I read that, and what Jesus apparently wanted us to know was that although in the future people would fight wars over who held the correct beliefs, both in the battlefields and in the pews of church meetings and worship, but when we read this, we realize that was not Jesus' major concern. Jesus' major concern was about the way of children. It was about the way of little children, not the way of learned theologians and not the way of sophisticated preachers. My little children, I give you a commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. And this is how they're going to know you're my follower is if they can witness you living and loving with one another. Because you see, this commandment is not about what you believe. This commandment is about how you live and what you live. Simple. Straightforward, at the core, foundational. There is a story in Isaac Denson's book, Out of Africa. Anybody ever read Out of Africa? Well, in it, there's just this little story in this great big book, and the author is talking about 
uh, that there was, there was a, a, a young man in the community named Kintuk, or Kittuk. And Kittuk came to her one day and said, Is it, would, you, would you allow me to come and kind of be your houseboy? Just let me do the things around the house. Let me make your life easier. And she goes, well, sh- well, sure. And so they decided on how much he would be paid. And it was going great. He was doing great work. She loved everything he was doing. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, about three months after he had started there, he walked in to, to her and said, ma'am, would you write me a letter of recommendation to Sheikh Ali Salim? who was a Muslim who lived in the next town over. Miss Denson said she couldn't figure it out. He had done such a great job. He had come and asked for this. She was well pleased. He was being paid well. In fact, she even offered him more money to stay. And what we find out is money was not what motivated him. When she asked, he said, you know, I've been doing some studying and working and I have decided I'm either going to be a Christian or a Muslim. And so I thought, well, I'm going to come work for you if you'll let me. You're a Christian person. I've lived with you three months. I now know how Christians live. And now I'm going to go live with Sheikh Ali and I'm going to see how Muslims live. And then I'm going to sit down and think about what I saw, and I'm going to choose which I want to be, Christian or Muslim. And Denson says in her book, I wish, I wish he had told me that when he asked. If my mother had only known, if Denson had only known. So, what's that mean today, 2014? Well, let me ask you this question, okay? Let me ask you this. Whoops, I left my phone in my office. How would you like it if somebody pulled out their iPhone and follow, had followed you around the last three months? or maybe the last eight months while we have been together, or the year that you were with Mendel, or the last five years that Passmore was here? What if they followed you with their iPhone recording you when you were at home? All of the discussions that you've had with your spouse. Yeah, I don't hear many people laughing. All of a sudden, we got real serious, didn't we? How about the discussions you've had with your kids or your grandkids? How about how you do work at your place of business? How about if somebody followed you with the iPhone and you not know it? And they followed you to church or to church meetings or to the parking lot meetings or the hallway meetings or to your Sunday school class. If we had only known Can you imagine someone following you around like that? Can you imagine putting it up on a screen and having every single person who watches that video turn around to you and say, as they're watching your film, oh, that's the way Christians live. Mm. I think I would be okay most of the time. But even as much as I've cleaned up my life at 60 as opposed to 20, there would still be some things there. 
And at the bottom line, I am one of those preachers that I mentioned earlier. And so today, on this day, I would say God's love is when we intentionally create a safe place where everyone can be genuinely who they were created to be. I would say God's love is where we practice hospitality at the deepest level of our lives. I would say God's love is understanding that we understand gratitude in the deepest parts of our souls. That God's love is what informs us to pray fervently not for God's will, but for God's will to be done. Today, I would say God's love celebrates diversity, lifts up relationship as holy and sacred, can be found where justice is lived out, where peace prevails, and where humility and humor walk hand in hand. And I have endeavored to live my life out in relationship with you with that definition of God's love and in my life. So how would you define God's love? Because I think it's important for you to do that. Because this afternoon after you leave this church, or sometime this week, or certainly on August 3rd, you are going to meet someone and they are going to witness just exactly how you live out. God's call and God's love in your life. Right here in this place. Every time you gather and every time you leave. God calls us by God's word. By this, everyone will know that you are Christ's disciples if you have love for one another. Simple, straightforward, at the core of who we are and foundational. I have enjoyed being here. I have enjoyed being a part of your journey. May God bless you as you live your lives out with your minister who is to come. And all God's people gathered and all God's people had an opportunity to hear and all God's people said and all God's people said and all God's people said Amen. 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 Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, we come and we gather here this day. And we realize, O God, that you have called us to this place at this time. Allow us, O God, to live in relationship with one another in the midst of your love. And that we hear the call 
to be a resurrection people. For we come and we pray these things in Jesus' name. And we all say, Amen.
And I think, my gosh, being a Christian must be so easy when you get older. Sin must go away. The temptations must go away. It has to get easier. As I've gotten older and as as I've matured as a Christian, I realize that's not the case. In fact, I have found that sin is more obvious and it's more easy to see now. And the temptations and the tangibleness of it is still there. And that is why I, and maybe yourself, need this table every week. Because this is where we come to acknowledge our faults and acknowledge how much we have failed as Christians and as people. That's what makes this bread and this cup so important each and every week where we acknowledge Christ's sacrifice for our sins so that we can be clean and whole again. On the night that Christ was betrayed, he took the bread and broke it, saying, this is my body broken for you. When you eat of this bread, remember me. May we pray. God of life, accept our grateful thanks for this bread as we remember the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. We are unworthy of that great love, yet in accepting him as our Savior, we become his disciples. We call upon you to be present with us now as we make our commitment to living more intently as disciples of Christ in our day. Amen. Christ also took the wine and said, This is the new covenant of my blood. Every time you drink of this, remember me. Dear Lord, we come to your table once again to receive the gift of grace. This cup reminds us of all the great sacrifice that made this possible. May each of us know of your great love that binds us together in Christian fellowship. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Here at First Christian, we practice intinction, where we'll ask that you will stand and come forth, take a piece of bread, and dip it into the cup. If you cannot come forward, Charles has plates in the back, and he will greet you at your pew. When you are done with communion, we have baskets on both sides so that you can give of your tithes and offerings of what the Lord has abundantly given to you. Would you please stand and come?
Let us pray. Almighty God, this bread and this wine that we have taken into our bodies, allow it to remind us of your Son and our Savior. And of these gifts, these tithes, these offerings, this that we have given from our abundance, we one more time lift it up and ask your blessings, that we may discern your will in the ways to allow it to take your minis- our ministry and your love to the people of this world. Bless us and keep us, for we pray these things in Jesus' name. And we all say, Amen. We come and we gather at this table each and every week as disciples, and it's there for us to remember. Each time we gather for worship, we also extend the invitation that if there's anyone here this day who wishes to make their confession of faith and to participate in the act of Christian baptism, you can come forward and make that confession. Or if you've already been baptized, we want you to know your baptism is accepted here. And if you wish to become a member of First Christian Church, you can do so by coming forward, transferring your membership either by statement or by letter. If it is your desire to do either of these things, once you come forward as we all stand and sing our hymn of Christ.
Chorus back up one more time. Forever God is faithful. Forever God is strong. Forever God is with us. Emily, if you didn't know it, Hi. this is Emily's last Sunday. She's gone and got all grown up on us. She's graduated and she's moving on. She and your daddy are moving out today, right? We're moving out next weekend. Next weekend. Mm-hmm. So this is her last Sunday with us. And so would you all say thank you to Emily for sharing her talent? We appreciate you, we appreciate all of you, but we appreciate what you've done and sharing this with us, Emily. I got through this in the early service. I cannot share with you what a pleasure and how meaningful it has been to me to be here these few months. Jim Evans will be preaching to you next week. Uh, I will be in Kentucky at a monastery. The following week, uh, Scott will be sharing the sermon with you, and I will be in Ohio visiting uh, my dad and my brother and my sister. And then on the 27th, it will be my last time to worship with you uh, as one of the ministers of this church. We're all going to do it together. And so I'm going to share some things with you today that all those other people may not understand. You know that on the Thursday I came here, the following Sunday, we started this. And I think at this point in time, not reflecting on anybody, I think it was kind of a combination of you being in transition, none of us knowing exactly what to do, where to do, how to do. October, November, and December was not the best worship experiences that we could have done. But I want to tell you today, today, what we just did in worship, I will stack up against any other disciple church in our denomination. Not to say that we are the best, but to say God has found God's place in this church, in this service. Not the only service, not the only way, but God is present here. And by the number of folks that we've had visit, this is an important part of your church and the worship experience at First Christian Church Disciples of Christ in Lubbock, Texas. And for whatever small part of that I was, I am glad, I am honored, 
And my hope and prayer is that you all will continue forward with the quality that Jacob and this band and these singers provide. For God comes and God graciously presents God's self every time you do this. So as we begin to walk out of here and leave this place today, may we remember that as we go out today, sometime this week, or on August 3rd, there are going to be those who are watching and know Christianity only by the way they see you live. And so now may God, the Creator, Jesus, the Savior, in the presence of the Holy Spirit, go with God, bless, and keep each and every one of us now and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Blessings to you.